Welcome to Inside the Heat. I am Jason Jackson. For most Heat fans, Josh McRoberts burst on your scene during the 2014 NBA playoffs, the Heat facing the then Bobcats in the first round. But today we take you a little bit deeper, going all the way back to his childhood in Indiana through his very interesting journey in the NBA. But we begin with a little ride over to South Beach to one of my favorite spots, Tuvia. Josh, what was it initially about the Heat, specifically the team or the city or the franchise, where you truly knew this was a real free agent option for you? First thing for me was just, you know, it's the Heat organization, proven to be, you know, a championship organization. They do things first class from top to bottom here. And so that was something that intrigued me. And when I talked to them, it seemed like it was a place that I could call home for, for several years. How has that process been like? The acclimation yeah. to uh, the Magic City? It's still in the process. I'm still kind of getting adjusted. It's a definitely a, a different feel than what I'm used to, a different, different culture, but I'm enjoying myself and finding my way. You've done this a couple times, so for those of us that, that haven't had to bop around from city to city, what is the most challenging thing for a professional athlete when you're moving to a new town, new market? Professional athletes specifically, I think, creatures of habit. We kind of do the same thing over and over, so just finding that routine, finding places you're comfortable with, you know, going, you know, to and from practice, after practice, well, I think that's the biggest thing. So have teammates been helpful in the acclimation process? Yeah. Absolutely. You guys have helped me out, shown me the ropes a little bit, kind of helped out in the, in the transition. And it's always good to know those guys that have been here for a while, have some experience here in the city. All right, Josh, it's one of my favorite places in town. I didn't find out about it until about last year, but now that I know that, I'm kind of wearing it out. Yeah. I really need to create a little variety. But Juvia is awesome right here on Lincoln Road in Miami Beach. It's beautiful. You got a place that you like uh, in Miami that's kind of like your spot? This might be it, but I, you know, I haven't, uh, I haven't picked one out yet. I'm still gonna take my time. Juvia in the running now. Great Vista, great staff, wonderful food. So let's go get some. Hey, how are you? Good. Good. I'm Jane. Welcome to Juvia. Thank you. That's Josh. I'm Jason. Nice We've got Jays all over this place. <laughs> well, first of all, let's just get a feel for your view of your own ball club. So just a few questions about the guys you spend the majority of your time with, <laughs> as we do during these seasons. Who's the funniest person on the team? Sean Williams is pretty funny. Sneaky, right? Yeah, yeah he's funny. That, yeah. You know, the obvious choice is Birdman. Come on, man. For the young guys, you know, Shabazz, he never shuts up. So, you know, he accidentally says something funny every once in a while. Now, this is going to be a tough one here. Who has the best style? I'm going to have to say D Wade and CB because I think they take it the most seriously. So, I don't want to hurt their feelings. But if you had to pick one of the two, I'm going to go with D Wade because he just brought in a bunch of socks for the locker room. If you win the room, I appreciated it. You, you win know? with gifts. Exactly. That's the deal. Exactly. Time to get the uh, Mr. Nice Ties around the room. <laughs> CB. It's Come time on, to get CB. that done. Exactly. Josh, what are you going to have? Uh, should I go with the lobster salad or should I go with the uh, the grilled salmon salad? Uh, the lobster salad. Lobster order, salad? Yeah. I'm going go uh -huh. to go with you then. Lobster right. salad. Okay. I'm going to have the uh, baby iceberg with the uh, king crab. Now, do you have one of these favorite pregame meals? It seems to be the discipline of every uh, professional athlete to have something. Now. We have some food available, like, before the game in the locker room, and I've just kind of been going with that lately. Previous years, I've mixed it up. Like, last year, I ate Jimmy John's every day before the game because it was, like, available on the road because and at home. Fast, exactly, it's fast. You know, this year, I've just been sticking with what they have available in the locker room, so it's been good. We travel for a living, and so it's sometimes tough to get people to understand how we may want to sit still. Still. However, if there was a place that you could go that you haven't been uh, through basketball, where would that be? Oh, man, that's tough, because exactly like you said, when the yeah. season's over with, I'm going home. <laughs> I'm not leaving. I'm not traveling. I say Hawaii, because I've never been there. I always say I wanted to go see it, but I've never been. You have had uh, a few quaff looks over your time. What is your favorite hairstyle? I don't know. I don't take it too seriously. I just kind of like to mix it up. So that, not a favorite I, look either way? I guess I, I'll say long because that's what I got, I'm got. i going with now. What are three things that may be on your bucket list, things you want to do before it's all over? Uh, hopefully a lot more than three things. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, we'll just take three. Though. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a tough question. I wasn't prepared. That's my job. Yeah. yeah. Now you're making me, like, <laughs> reconsider my life. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is the intent of Inside man. the Heat. Yeah, we is... want to go deep inside. We're going to ask some questions about the team. <laughs> yeah. or, you know, I'll get to those. Talk basketball. Yeah. But exactly. I don't like to think like that, man. I like to take it, you know, a day at a time. As like cliche as that is, I don't like to. I don't even like to plan like for the weekend. I kind of like to take things as they come, and live each day, and kind of like stay in the moment. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. The good people of the great state of Indiana love basketball. They get fired up for the Pacers. They love college basketball, but they have a special place in their heart for high school basketball. McRoberts found himself right at the center of that as a star at Carmel High School on the north side of town. Now, as a proud Midwesterner, I made a mistake when we initially met and called Carmel, Indiana. Yeah. Carmel. Yeah, Indiana. that's not too fancy. Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah. But that's where you grew up. Yeah. Uh, what was childhood like there? In general, I mean, I just remember a lot of time with my family, a lot of basketball. That's the perception of someone that's not from Indiana, that every kid is out playing basketball yeah. all day, all night. But are, are, there, are there other fun things? There's other stuff to do, but yeah. I... You'd have to talk to some of my friends or something. All <laughs> I that's what you did. Yeah. You were the kid. I mean, I played other sports. I think I played everything as a, as a kid. You know, soccer, baseball, football. Uh, I played everything, but basketball was always it. We have a unique similarity. Both our mothers were school teachers. What was it like having a mom that taught? Man, it was cool. Uh, she was a second grade teacher when I was in second grade. So I was in like the classroom next door to her classroom. So I couldn't, and like she was friends with all the teachers, obviously. They all have their secret handshakes, and you know. Exactly. They, I mean, I was a pretty good kid, yeah. but, uh, you know, yeah, it was, I, I wasn't getting away with anything. That's for sure. Tell us a little bit about the rest of your family. Did they have uh, any influence on the basketball part of your life as well? Yeah, I mean, uh, my dad played basketball at Butler, uh, so that was probably my biggest influence basketball wise. My mom played volleyball, but her, her dad was a high school coach. Uh, Played, also played at Butler, played basketball at Butler. What is your first vivid memory of basketball? I remember playing basketball at the YMCA when I was like five years old. We had like the yellow t-shirts as jerseys, at least I you think had the it was. I had so. the thick like wool 1925 jersey. That was, so yeah. at least you had the t-shirt. No, nah, yeah, we had like the, the yeah. big like t-shirt that was too big. Right. You know, everybody's exactly. little kids size. wearing like an XO, like exactly. adult shirt exactly. probably. Exactly. But no, nah, it was, uh, that's probably my first memory of basketball. As you got to Carmel High School, you played all four years of varsity. That's got to be the Indiana kid's dream come true. My biggest thing was, like, I just wanted to play on the high school team. Like, I never thought about, like, realistically, I never thought about playing college basketball. I never thought about, you know, I, th I thought about it a little bit. You yeah. know, my dad played at Butler, so I thought, you know, if I could play at Butler, that would be cool if I would have had a chance. But honestly, I never thought about playing past high school. For the folks that are watching this that don't understand what high school basketball is like in the great state of Indiana. Just give them a little bit of a picture of just like what those games are like. It's intense, especially in the in the playoffs. But it's a it's a great atmosphere. And I, I had an opportunity to play against some great players. We had several NBA players grow up and play right there in our conference in high school. So when was that moment where it was clear to you that this was something bigger than just playing four years high school back? I think probably my freshman year. Freshman year after my freshman year, I knew I would have a chance to play in college, I think. I knew that it might be something more than that, probably my junior, senior year of high school. So by the time you became a USA Today first team selection, MVP at the McDonald's All-American, you pretty much knew where you were in the mix nationally, I'd imagine. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah I think. I mean, by that point, um, because you're kind of done with all that stuff by the time you get to your senior year uh, of high school, or like high school basketball, with, throughout like the summer and all that. So you kind of know where you stand or where, what's going to go on there. When you're back home, we understand you spend some time talking to young people, that you get back and, and share some things with high school students. I try to get back. I mean, probably my, my main experience with that was during the last lockout. I think my brother was a sophomore on the team that year. And so it was cool to be able to help out and, and kind of give me something to do where I could still be around the game. Is staying connected with your hometown something that's really important to you? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I tried to a little bit. It's where I came from. It's where I always have roots there. So it's something that uh, I think is, is important to me. Eating is important to me, as you can tell from just pure sight. <laughs> so let's do that. I 
have anything right there? <laughs> I wasn't planning on eating all this, but it's too good. It's too good. It's too good.